Hello Mystery Report and Tutor subscribers. This is Terrell from Terrell03.com. Today is January 31st, 2021 on a Sunday. And as, as promised, the first Mystery Report newsletter is going to be done in January. Just got the notifications completed on the 29th and can finally get to answering or sharing with you my uh, answer for Gary on God's men and angels is clarifying statements on another one below and now uh, before before uh, getting started there's there's a few announcements over here so so some of you I'm, I'm this is gonna be uploaded to the YouTube channel that I still have that YouTube you know my, my Christian channel and likely to Brighty on too and so there's new people that are just being exposed to my work. Wondering, what's this mystery report stuff? That's what these two programs down here are about. This one gives you access to all the newsletters from the beginning. 2019, 2020, and what's coming out in 2021. And this one gives you tutor. It's the same as the Black Star, $25, $50 if you want to be in the survival group program. And then $25 a year if you, uh, and this the great part about this program is you get all the newsletters from the beginning. There's a paper uh, trail, the breadcrumb trail that's left for you if you begin at the beginning with the first news report from 2019 and you follow each along from the Dropbox folder. So you're going to get a Dropbox folder link if you access. Go to newsletter number one, two, three, four, five, six. And uh, you're going to see God's hidden wisdom. It's really, really great stuff. And uh, twenty-five dollars over here, fifty dollars over here, and the the two thousand twenty-one mystery report newsletter Dropbox folder link was has been sent to everybody that's supposed to get it anyway. So if for any reason you haven't received your notification, then make sure that you write to me in the email address from your previous notification, and I'll get that to you right away. So then uh, many. Don't come down this far down the website. You'd be amazed how many people write to me and say, how do you subscribe? I don't know how to subscribe. They're coming to the website and they're likely not making it beyond about right here. They're looking on their phones and stuff. Then just go right on down here. That's where you're going to find this here. And also, if you're in the side of the United States, you can get a copy of my book. 555 pages. It's on the best quality paper available. It's an expensive book. 66 bucks. If you get it at Amazon, brand new. You can get an author's first edition from me. And it's going to be numbered. I'm at number, what is the number now? Is it 68? Something like that. And if you're in the United States, then this is going to cover the shipping. And if you're overseas, then this is going to see your international right there. If you want a, you know, signed autograph, numbered copy from me from, from the first batch, happy to send that to you also. And then when you subscribe, then you get discounts on NanoSilver. And uh, I know many people are waiting on the rapture. You've made the connection that the destruction comes suddenly, like the birth pangs upon a woman with child, First Thessalonians 5. And you realize that we're caught up to meet the Lord in the air just before that. But the idea is to be numbered among those that are alive. Right? They're getting ready to release the mutagen. And if you pass in February or April, March, April, and then the rapture comes just before the Black Star event in May, then you get, you're get you not going to be among the living who remain, who are caught up. You're going to be raised first. So for me, I want to be have the insignia on my chest plate that says I was alive to the end of this dispensation, this 2,000-year mystery time on the earth. I was alive and caught up to meet the Lord in the air, never seeing death like, guess who? Elijah and Enoch. I think it's really cool to have want that little insignia. It doesn't seem like much now, but for those that are aware, that's a big deal when you're moving through the ages and you have this extra little insignia on your chest plate that distinguishes you. There's only a certain number of us that are going to be caught up to meet the Lord that who are alive and remain. There's only going to be so many of us. And we're going to be distinguished from the rest of the body who died ahead of us. So, I mean, that's one of the reasons... Then I keep nanosilver in my system 
Okay, that should cover the announcements. Now we can get into to see how long this takes to get through Gary's first because there's clarifying statements written to Gary also. Gary's kind of leading the band at the moment with the mystery uh, report questions. So the remember again, the $50 per year program allows you to be like Gary and to send me your question. So then I'm your tutor. I'm on the hook. Back and forth we go. The $25 gives you access to the newsletters, so you can benefit from looking over our shoulders, kind of speak, but it's only two bucks a month, and this is, whenever you get to heaven and look back and look forward, you're going to realize this was extremely, extremely important. So this is from Gary, God's Men and Angels, and he's asking me questions. This was back on January the 5th. Give you an idea of, of how busy that I've been getting notifications out and just now I'm able to get it I'm happy that I'm able to fulfill my word to you and get it done in the month of January so, so so far so good everything's happening a little bit later this is the latest year the latest time in January on the 29th that's five days later than the record from last year from uh, January the 25th because of, uh, there's a lot more support so Gary writes he wrote uh, you wrote in your book in the blood witness section the realm of men represents one half of the DNA code, while the realm of the angels is the other half. Satan's destruction of Adam called two beings into existence for every perfect being, pre-fall being, in God's perfect creation. Okay, so we can stop right there for a second. And we're going back to Genesis 1.1. And I can pull you up a diagram. This is how the story begins. Pull this over just a hair. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. This is the key for unlocking God's Bible code right here. Spirit, blood, water. God is spirit. Heaven, blood, earth, water. Just like a spirit, soul, and a body. This is where we come from. Seventh-day people, God's in this realm right here. So then rebellion happened here. S Satan is a singularity here, just like the Word is a singularity here. The Word is broken into the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Satan is broken down into the dragon, the beast, and the false prophet. Everything that is a singularity here has an incarnation here, has an incarnation here too. So let's look at the Second diagram. So you can still see God is a singularity here. But here are his three witnesses from Revelation 1 8. God to come, God who is, and God who was. Same pattern spirit, blood, water. If you want to give them a numerology, which God does, this is one, this is two, this is three. Even though the blood witness came last, it's made first ahead of the water witness. It's the basics of understanding the mystery process right here. These are created realms within the realm of time and space. This is where we come from as gods. If you're a seventh-day person, there's seventh-day people, there's six-day people. We're going to touch on some of that if we have time in uh, those clarifying statements. So this is the man of God. This is the this creation. All things were made by him, were made through him. And in him, all um, everything was made that was made. So this is the tabernacle form that I'm showing you right here. There's also an egg form where the infinite realm is an infinite shell. Christ, Jesus, heaven is the white of the yolk of, of the egg that contains. This is a boiled egg um, diagram that, well, I haven't shown you yet, but it's in, it's in my book, The Mystery Explained. And then the earth is the yolk that's held inside contained in him all things are held together in him so this is the tabernacle form that has other that has other ways of understanding other other types of diagrams so that you can understand so the thing to realize is we pull up the diagram based on what i just said that the angels is the realm that they live in the heavens men they live in the earth the the angel is the greater half of the man that's here so you wonder where your soulmate is you're down here on the earth, you have a soulmate in heaven, your other half. When you take the man, 
We'll put the woman back inside the man. Put the man back inside the angel. You have a, an immortal soul that lives in heaven. But in the first diagram that I showed you over here, this creation existed for ages in this perfect form. No such thing as men. No such thing as angels. No such thing as women. That's why there's no such thing as anything like that in heaven. No male or female, no Jew or Gentile, nothing like that. They were all singularity expressions here. So the Big Bang didn't create anything. That's a myth. God created this singular expression, but then he destroyed it too. Because he had to reproduce what happened in the satanic rebellion that happened here. That divided the waters above and the waters below. And heaven was what's in the middle. You see how that takes us to this scenario, Genesis 1, 6 through 8. The waters above, the waters below, and the firmament's called, or the expanse is called, heaven. That's what we're looking at right here. With a spirit, with a soul, with a body. Just like the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit have a spirit, soul, and a body. This is the pattern. God to come, God who is, God who was. This is the pattern. Right here. Helping you to see the pattern. If I start, because Gary sees these things, he's got my book, he's been asking me questions, so he kind of sees these things, but if we, if, if, if I just speak to Gary, because he's more advanced, a lot of you guys that are just starting off are not going to see it, so I had to give you that little foundation to stand on, so that we can define the terms the same way, to keep semantics on the sidelines, that's the goal. So, now, when you're ready to hear, this is like DNA being stranded together, which kind of ties into the the uh, COVID topic with the um, retrovirus that does things backwards. So when the when the re, the uh, recombining occurs in heaven, we return to our original perfect form. As you write further down, so this is this is uh, Gary talking right here. He has a name given to the new original perfect forms while they are still in heaven okay has a name been given to these new original perfect forms while they're still in he heaven and the answer is going to be yes but you see my practice is to give gary's email right to his name in a complete form so as not to break everything up fragment everything and then we lose the essence of what his line of questioning is so this is from the beginning. So I'll get to those the answers. First, we're going to understand what Gary sent to me. Now, I am thinking of original perfect forms will at some point cross the first veil and return to the infinite realm. Is that correct? If I am thinking correctly, is the crossing the first veil by the original perfect forms continual throughout the process of re, um, recombining or do they line up and cross all at once? Does this group go through another process to return to their original God's form to cross the first veil and return to the infinite realm? So hopefully these aren't too silly of questions. Just trying to understand the processes of this revelation you have given me through your book. It seems that I can understand the concepts and truths better by converting the process to cause and effect. Anyway, can't wait to start my new job, so to speak. This is really amazing, Gary. Our new job includes judging the world and the angels. We're, it's going to become self-evident. As soon as the rapture happens, you're going to realize that we're already there. So then this is against my reply that was drafted originally on the 6th of January, which was updated this morning. That's what I've been doing. I had to put the Black Star work aside it's the only way this is going to get done sometimes i just have to do that and this is the you know on sunday that's the, that's the that's the time to do you know something like this okay so this is in again this is what he wrote to me on the fifth okay he wrote in your book the realm of men represents the one half of the dna code while the realm of the angels is the other half satan's destruction of adam called two beings into existence for every perfect being pre-fall being in god's perfect creation so when the when the recombining occurs in heaven we return to our original form as you write further down has the name been given to new original perfect forms while they are still in heaven so this is the um this is somewhat 
the diagram that I just showed you, but when you're reading the Mystery Explained, you'll see that the diagrams begin very simple at the beginning, then they become more complicated. And that by the end, they get extremely complicated, but hopefully we build the foundation so that you can grow through the process. The Mystery Explained is really a manual, and it is designed to be read three times. And there are instructions to of things that you're going to do in your Bible as a workbook, underlying personal pronouns and things like that, that help the process. Those that go through and do everything that you're instructed to do, and as long as God has tapped you on the shoulder and he allows you to see it, then you're going to see it. This is really, really fantastic stuff. It's just words cannot hardly describe the what goes on inside of you with a new man growing to maturity rapidly, and then you seeing things in your environment and within yourself that you could never see before because God is opening your spiritual eyes. So, in answer to the question, yes, of course. First, we are all we are already returned to our original perfect form, being seated in Him, Jesus Christ, in the heavenly places, in Christ Jesus. And you notice, Gary, that I've updated this and include and written out the um, the verses, and and, and and now I'm have the opportunity to provide more provide more commentary in this uh, video re, uh, reply. So, but God, being rich in mercy because of his great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead in our wrongdoings or our transgressions, made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved and raised us up with him and seated us with him in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus, so that in the ages to come he might show the boundless riches of his grace and kindness toward us in Christ Jesus. And then I added to that, um, Gary. For he rescued us from the domain of darkness and transferred us to the kingdom of his beloved Son, in whom we have redemption and forgiveness of sins. So you notice the ends here. In whom? The mystery of Christ is about us being baptized into Christ on the cross at Calvary. This is very important. The moment you obey the gospel, you, God sends the preacher. God has to send the preacher. I see, and I'm sorry. I'm, if some of you think that I'm being critical or whatever, but this is important. This is our, our salvation. And the, the person that I hear the most is Paul Bagley, who my significant other listens to every day. Okay. And he feels that just saying, do you want to be saved? Raise your hand and that's it. But there's a, you have, God has to send the preacher that has the Holy Spirit in him. That Holy Spirit that's in him convicts you as you, as he is preaching the gospel, which I've never heard him do. That Jesus Christ is Lord, that God raised him from the dead on the third day. That our forgiveness is in him, our redemption is in him, and our forgiveness is through his shed blood. It's very simple, the gospel. It's hearing. The kind of hearing that includes obedience. And then the Holy Spirit it's a it's a faith to faith transaction. The Holy Spirit in the preacher is conveyed to you. It's given to you, and so it's through having the Holy Spirit that you obey the gospel, obedience of faith. Okay, and at that moment you are baptized into Christ's body on the cross at Calvary two thousand years ago. So that. The same thing that happens to Christ happens to you. When God raised Christ from the dead, so whenever Christ died, let me take it back a little bit, then you died in him because you're a member of his body. You were baptized into his body to partake in his death, his burial, and his resurrection, and this glorification being seated in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. So whenever Paul says, Ephesians 4, start at uh, 8, that he was raised above all the heavens. He's talking about these heavens right here. Raised above all the heavens and seated in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Christ Jesus, the heavenly man Christ Jesus, is the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit as a man. The man Christ Jesus is not talking about Jesus Christ walking around the earth. He's talking about the Spirit, blood, water of the Father. This is my Father who art in where? My Father who art in heaven. This is where he gets his name. Heaven of Genesis 1 1. So many people believe that my Father who art in heaven is the Almighty. And he most certainly is not. The Almighty 
is God who is, God who was, and God who is to come from Revelation 1, 8. So in Genesis 1, 26 through 28, whenever the Lord God says, which, which is just God there, Elohim, he says, let us make man like us. God who is is the speaker. God who is is speaking and us is God to come and God who was. His God who is is the king. He has the image of the eagle. He sees all things that are now present. God who was is his priest. He makes intercession. God to come is his prophet. He, he's over, he commands everything regarding the future. God who is consults him and consults him and speaks to them as including himself as us in Revelation 1.26. When you realize that, you'll see that man is a spirit witness, woman is a water witness, and the seed that enlarges between them, those are the blood witnesses. The image, this is the image, it's triune. Because everything that was a singularity was broken down into a trinity. Everything. That's where the, the dragon, the beast, and the false prophet, that's their Satan in the infinite realm. Just like the Word is the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Broken down in these realms in time and space as three instead of one. That's why you have a spirit, soul, and a body and you're no longer singularity because you're broken. The universe is broken. Relativity and quantum physics do not reconcile in the earth. This is like trying to define the family by just the woman. You cannot define all things in this universe just through what's physical. Where relativity and quantum do reconcile is in heaven. Where the spirit and the water overlap. Okay, it's so just a little background information to try to help you to be able to see the larger picture which you can see by looking inward because Christ in you is this entire realm incarnate inside of you the entire realm incarnate inside of you so our access to this almost infinite realm is not by looking out into the cosmos it's by looking inward and realizing that Christ in you the hope of glory is the incarnation of Christ Jesus that's what it is and guess who is incarnate? Guess who is in Christ reconciling the world to himself? God. The only thing that could contain God who is infinite is his word that's incarnate in us. Our access to God is through the intercession that Christ Jesus provides in us. So we're speaking inwardly through our heart to God who is the entire infinite realm who is incarnate inside of the word inside of us. Sounds kind of complicated, doesn't it? But whenever you can see it, it is extremely simple. These diagrams were drawn back in 2005, more than 15 years ago. And the, the Mystery Explained was only just um, published in 2017. There's not a thing that uh, to be changed about the diagrams, by the way. Once you see the truth, it stays the same. So yes, of course, first, we are already returned to our original perfect form in Christ Jesus. Then I read this to you, and this is, uh, we've been transferred. We've been transferred from this earth realm into, see, transferred us into this realm here. We are there right now. To remember that we are doing things in the earth, the heavens, heaven, and earth, as it is in heaven. The gospel is the power of God for those who believe because we show up in Christ Jesus upon believing with a past, a present, and a future as if we have been in heaven of Genesis 1-1 since before the foundation of the world. The earth in Genesis 1-1. Power of God. And it's, the scripture does not say that the power of God is his foreknowledge. It says the gospel for a reason. The gospel is the power of God because God changes things. He changes things in heaven. He changes it in the infinite realm the moment you believe. That's the part, the predestination part of of Calvin's tulip is the part he never got. He never got it right. He didn't, didn't understand how God's word changes things. We show up in Christ Jesus as if we were there from the beginning. That's how he chooses us in Christ before the foundation of the world. God is standing beyond the realm of time and space and he manipulates things 
Why? Because he can. And his power and his might and his grace are greater than all the works of men and angels combined. That's the lesson that he's showing the those uh, powers in the heavenly places. Okay. So, all Christ's body members have names in heaven before the, the, the creation of earth, where we are doing things already done over and over again. thing to realize, the events happening, transpiring between infinite gods and God's infinite realm, just try to imagine what that means. Infinite gods in an infinite realm. Everything is infinite. So we have to live many, many ages in order to do things already done. That's why we're here incarnating. Seventh-day people incarnate in this realm one time per age. Six-day people can incarnate over and over and over again. Well, that's another topic, but for those that are reading my book and following along, then there is a larger picture for us to see things, and it all makes sense. When you see the three witnesses of spirit, blood, and water everywhere, you, you start seeing them in the scriptures, you start seeing them in yourself, and then you start seeing them everywhere. Everywhere you look. It's going to give you a different interpretation of, th of things in your environment. Because of what God is showing you with Christ incarnate inside of you through Christ. Because in Him is all knowledge and wisdom. So many of my interpretations that you see of doing the science is based upon what God has shown me having the mind of Christ gives me an advantage whenever you see it and you start grow Christ is growing in you well we don't have time if you're just starting for that to be decades and decades like me you know I'm kind of old and this God began this process in me as a teenager so I have an advantage God gave me an advantage I'm out in front Holy Spirit's alive in me I can preach the gospel to you when God sends me to you right and then you can have the opportunity to grow very rapidly by using these Pictures that are all color-coded, spirit witnesses, blood witnesses, water witnesses. Color-coded, there's a color code here. If you watched recently, then Gary was asking me about the different, why is he different color than us that are in Christ Jesus? Why? There's a reason. Okay. So, then he asks, question. I know some of the members of Christ's body and some are members of the bride of Christ, but are there other groups I am unaware of? And the answer is going to be absolutely 100% yes. God has been in the creation business for an infinite amount of time. He has relationships with all kinds of different households. Things that you cannot even begin to imagine in this world. God's the creator. There's only one God. And he, with the big G, and that's the Almighty. And everything that he's ever made it, created, and every will create, will fit on the, the tip of the pinky finger. His pinky finger. He's that much greater than everything he's ever going to create. He's the only game in town. So God has relationships with thousands of hosts and different kinds of uh, of different kinds like cherubim, our guardians, guard the way back to Eden with the flaming sword. Just look out into David's kingdom to realize the body of Christ stands in the position of the king judging the world and the angels. Peter, John, and James and the kingdom bride testify as the priests, the royal priesthood providing intercession for the people of the kingdom that are hosts of the kingdom of heaven. David's prophets have heavenly counterparts where there are many heavenly hosts with dispensational relationships. You have to understand what these definitions are, not as we define them today, but as they, the words were used by the Greek people 2,000 years ago and by the Hebrew people in Old Testament times. So we're reading the Old Testament we are reading from right to left and thinking in Hebrew or Aramaic. In the New Testament, we're reading right to left, uh, you know, left to right, in ancient Greek and Aramaic, where that applies. It's very, very important. Those that have translations, American translation, what they're only translations. So when you're reading it and you're reading in English, you're thinking in Greek or you're thinking in Hebrew. Really, really important to do that. And dissecting and trisecting the original le the words of the, the terms of the original language is going to get you so far. That's what I did decades ago and then tr uh, moved over from the uh, received text to the critical text, which is basically the King James Version over to the New American Standard Version uh, for a reason. And uh, the Bible that's on my desk is the, uh, the interlinear 
it's a Nelson's uh, interlinear it gives you the the critical text and the received text side by side along with the majority text which is just what the majority of the manuscripts say and it shows you where the branch off where the branches are they branch out and it allows you to come to a knowledge of the truth once you see the three witnesses the need to dissect and trisect the languages just falls away not necessary because God's going to show you the big picture in the way that his secret code there's a code for unlocking the truths of scripture based upon spirit blood and water sounds too simple doesn't it so many people are saying that cannot be true it is absolutely 100 percent true once you see it you'll understand why there's a Peter John and James Abraham Isaac and Jacob Father Son and Holy Spirit you're gonna understand why these threes pop up everywhere because they're testifying for an original singularity in the beginning and going all the way back to the infinite realm where were gods okay so um, Peter John and James they are the priesthood they're the water witnesses and let's see there are some that have dispensational relationships with God directly like the Chinese like the Native American Indians the naked um, natives out in the jungle they are all they are, notice they all have black hair you notice that they're beardless you notice that they're all RH positive exclusive they are cousins of the amphibious and the reptilian races as as crazy as that might sound then they are related because they all came from the waters of Genesis 120 evolution is real for six day people right for the animals and things that are around us seventh day people are different they're gods from God's infinite realm six day people are members of Adam's body incarnate here but originally created in the infinite realm on the day that God created Adam through his word so there's a difference between six day and seventh day people to give you an example the seventh day people were, were in the Spanish and they're they're uh, as they were going around the planet and conquering so what in in, in the English people that came here to the, uh, the United States and in the the French that went that went to Louisiana okay seventh-day people coming and they were interacting with the natives and generally basically killing them with all manner in all kinds of ways this is indicative of the gods and God's infinite realm that incarnated inside of Adam to begin interacting with the hosts that were already there that God created inside of them so like I keep saying there's a larger picture that you can see once you get all these those little parts put together in the right way then everything makes perfect sense okay so then that's what my explanation here is the seventh-day people are gods like Adam they incarnate inside of him then you have the six-day people like the oriental races aborigines American Indians testifying in heaven and earth that's of Genesis 1 6 through 8 so there's a tethering there's a cord that connects seventh-day people to heaven of Genesis 1 1 right here that's where you're tethered there is a tether for six-day people that are tethered to heaven of Genesis 1 8 right here so whenever the six-day people whenever they die and go to heaven this is where they're going to be going whenever we pass this is the heaven that we go to right here we're only here in this realm as members of the lamb's body the lamb is the incarnation of this entire realm we are there so because we're there and this is an incarnation of the Lamb. Guess what? We are incarnate inside the Lamb here too. And our work of service to the throne of the Lamb is right here in heaven, in the center of the throne. Okay? Even though we're gods over here, we're incarnate heaven hosts here, almost infinite. We are uh, as hosts here. See, this is still a water witness. Even though we're in heaven and we're members of the Lamb's body, this is still a water witness realm. This is the blood witness realm, and this is the spirit witness realm. This realm here is divided up in the same way. Spirit, angels, men, this is singularity host. But a singularity host here is still a water witness. He still has a blood witness incarnation here. I know that it looks kind of complicated, doesn't it? You start from the beginning, start simple, and then you're, we're going to add a few bits here and there as we're progressing along, and then you're going to be able to get it. It requires time and prayer. And God is going to show you so much while you're trying to feed yourself. And after that, you're going to reach a plateau and you're going to learn nothing until you look into your environment and help others to see what God has shown you. 
That's I'm sharing it with Gary. I'm sharing it with you guys. And God expands what I can see. And then Gary helps other people in his environment. And God expands what Gary can see. And you take these things. You see what I mean? That's It's a continual process. Kind of like Amway. Kind of. Right? Okay. So they're the evolved hosts, they are related because they they evolved from the waters of Genesis 120. That's not true of everybody. Seventh day people, we are have a part in Adam's recent incarnation in skins that began in Genesis 321. Everything that takes place from Genesis 27 to Genesis 320, where Eve is mother of all living, takes place in heaven. It's whenever they're putting skins on the earth that they can begin procreating. And that's why you see the seed coming, her seed and your seed mixed together inside of Adam and Eve. So you don't know if you're getting a cane or you don't know if you're getting an Abel. And that is going to be the way things are to the ages of the ages, to the end of the ages. So even though the devil's chain, once we get into the new heaven and new earth, Revelation 21, and the, the, the ones that are coming after that, you can still, the people that are living then, they're going to live to be a th thousands of years old. And they are going to get Cain's and Abel's all the way to the end. So uh, the, our duty, our job, is to identify those Cain's and to deal with them. On a case-by-case -case basis, judge the world and the angels as we go. From in the Lamb as members of his body. So this is Gary. Now, I'm thinking of the original perfect forms. And my reference is to singularities. Okay. Um will at some point cross the first veil and return to the infinite realm. Is that correct? Okay, just look at this diagram for a second. And it's not labeled here. My apologies. This is going to be the first veil that's right here. If you can use your imagination, this is just like the temple of God. This is like the tabernacle of Moses, if you will. Okay, it's just this veil is moved to here. And the, the water... The, the labor of water is placed out here. That's where the priests wash before they can go through that first veil. Then there's a second veil that's right here. That's the Holy of Holies at the top. This is the holy place that's in the middle. Okay, so when he's referring to the first, the first veil, then he's talking about... See this first veil? Second veil. If you go back to the original, this is the earth, kingdom of this world, kingdom of the sun, this is heaven. This is the infinite realm. See the first veil? He's asking about going through this first veil that's right here. And that's going to be incorrect. The infinite realm's on the far side of the second veil. The second veil and first veil define the holy place. Now if you look at the tabernacle of Moses, you notice there's a double portion here. This is a 10 cubit by 30 cubit thing. Same thing as the Trinity. And this veil is moved to here for a reason because the Holy Spirit has been booted out of here and is in the world. So whenever the people are, are whenever the priests, if you will, in the tabernacle are bathing in that laver of water, then they're preparing themselves, just like John the Baptist in baptism. That's why there are three baptisms of the kingdom and only one baptism for to baptize us into Christ Jesus, the, according to the mystery of Christ. It's because they have to pass through these veils. Veil is extremely important. You're going to want to understand the veils. Okay. So let me now get back to... Oh, I haven't got down to there yet. Okay, yeah, this is where I was right here. Look closely and uh, between figure one and figure two and see the hosts of heaven and the earth return to the infinite realm through the second veil, which is right here, even though it's not labeled on this diagram. And um, they return to the infinite realm that te that testifies like the second veil of the holy place of the temple and the holy of holies used just once a year. So if I'm thinking correctly, is the crossing is crossing the first veil by the original perfect forms continual process through the process of the recombining, or do they line up and cross all at once? Does this group go through another process to return to their original God form? To cross the first veil and the second and return to the infinite realm. So all the hosts of heaven, all the hosts of earth are summed up in Christ and in Adam. See, when you're on the earth, when you're in this universe, you're a member of Adam's body. Made in his likeness. Whenever you are in heaven, you're a member of Christ's body. 
But this is the first Adam. This is the last Adam. It's right here. Christ and Adam then began walking together towards the second veil in a conversation. Until both turned towards the other and passed through the second veil with a smile. Until the two, the last Adam and the first Adam, become one. That process sums up all Christ's body members and all of Adam's body members into the same singularity body so that Adam is restored as a God in God's infinite realm. That's what heaven and earth is, was created for. It's the only reason that they're created for. The, re the restoration of all things is the restoration of one Son of God. In this universe, his name is Adam. Okay, we are all members of his body here until we're members of the last Adam's body in heaven, which is the Lamb of God if you're in this realm, and it's Christ Jesus if you're in this realm. This shows in Genesis 1 1, and then the summing up is all, all and God's all in all at the end. This is the th process in between. Eventually, there's going to be no Father and there's going to be no Holy Spirit either. Before you guys start gasping, Go back to the beginning. In the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God. The Word was God. Where's the Father? My Father art in heaven. He's inside the Word with the Holy Spirit and the Son. They're the same thing. Singularity. They had to be broken in order to interact with people who have a spirit, soul, and a body in the heavens, heaven, and earth. That's why God had to break His Word. He had to sacrifice His Word. The original sacrifice came so He could send the Lamb of God into heaven as the light of Genesis 1-3. That's the reason why. So eventually, all the water witnesses disappear. They decrease. The Father, the heavens, and God to come all decrease until they become all in all again. That's the summing up process from 1 Corinthians 15. Okay, so Genesis 1 and John 1, 1 show God with this word heaven and Adam, earth, in him until the word heaven is with God and all things are called to exist in him. The summing up process is done in reverse, with God, with Adam going back into the word heaven, so the word and earth, as one, can return to the restored God's infinite realm through the second veil. So Gary had everything right if you'd have said second veil. So hopefully these are not silly questions, just trying to understand the process of this revelation you have given me through your book seems that I can understand the concepts um, and truths better by conveying cause and effect. And anyway, cannot wait to start my new um, job. That's talking about his heavenly job and the cause and effect thing. Uh, I'd just like to say something right here. There is no cause in this earth realm, even though people believe there is. No such thing. The cause is in the infinite realm. Every cause here is in the infinite realm where you're a God. We've already done these things before. We're doing them for the third time now. We've done them in the infinite realm where the satanic rebellion took place. We did it in heaven where Michael the Archangel is fighting the dragon and we did it here for the third time. So I say, Amen. You and David. David's my brother from another mother. Love him like my brothers. He was here yesterday. He finished up the bathroom project. And he's a local here. The guy remodeled my bathroom. You guys are on the same page. And David gets distracted. And that's probably likely one of the reasons that this project took so long is he gets distracted, but he was also sick for a little while. But um, he, he asked tons and tons of questions. My friend Jetta used to ask me tons and tons and tons of questions, likely more than anybody, my friend Jetta. So I began explaining to her the differences between, to, between the Almighty and my Father who art in heaven. And she, it, she started stuttering at me whenever she saw that. And she has not had a question since. So I'm a little bit concerned about you, um, Jetta. So on the um, so you and David are on the same page and asking similar questions. You know, and sometimes you guys are asking me similar or the same questions on the same day. It's amazing how that works. So the um, it's like you can feel... I'm rubbing my fingers together like sensing the ethers, if you will. I can feel something that's spiritual that's happening here. And my brothers that are around me are kind of, you guys are witnesses and testi giving testimony that we've done, we've done this before. We've done all this before. And the more that these things happen, the more you get that deja vu feeling, right? I know some ladies are out there, you have very powerful intuition. You, you know what 
kind of what I'm talking about here. Even though I'm talking about something that's spiritual, where the man has the one, three, five, seven power centers of the body, and the ladies have the two, four, six. But it takes one, two, three, four, five, six, seven to make a man. So just the male half is still lost without the female half. Put the two together to make the one man. And amazing, amazing things happen. Just you have your strengths. And man has his strengths. And woman is to use her man as if he's an angel. Because he's your spirit witness. That's what Paul's talking about. About keeping your veil, your head covered because of the angels. Because the angels are spirit witnesses. And that's why that you're instructed to, to keep your mouth silent. And to consult your husband for a reason. Because we're doing things already done. And that includes deception from the infinite realm. And there is a time to put a zipper on it. Just saying, because those who are incarnate here as women were deceived by Satan directly. Those incarnate here as men were not deceived by Satan directly. They were deceived by those incarnate here as women. So in order to stop that process that's already happened, and it happened again in the, in the uh, heaven realm, but you're going to stop it right here because you're going to follow the instructions of the steward of the dispensation of God's grace. That's who Paul is. Recognizing that is extremely important. Okay. So, um, so therefore, when the rapture happens, everything changes in the flash of a single second. For Christ's body members to realize that they are already there. That's what's going to happen. It's going to be a, a, a familiarity to everything that happens from that moment on. Because you're going to realize that you've been in heaven from the beginning with the past, present, and future. I'm talking about the almost infinite realm. So the toiling of this earth is being done by our water witness incarnation and our blood witness incarnation in heaven, testifying for us as gods in God's infinite realm. That is the only realm that is real. God will reward us in unspeakable glory to give us things that are already ours. Until we step back through the second veil, all restored into one testifying from within Adam restored which is the reason that heaven and earth were created in the first place. So, looking at my time, 47 minutes and 21 seconds, likely not going to be able to go through this next one. On earth as it is in heaven, as it is in God's infinite realm. And just to give you a little taste of this, so this is to inspire some of you who are wanting a little bit more to become Mystery Report supporters. Start from the beginning and then work up to this presentation that's right here and everything's going to make sense because a lot of this if you've just been exposed to this went right over your head but that's normal there are babes in christ that are just starting out that are you know, unstable and there are you know intermediate type um students of the word and then they're more advanced that uh that that can eat the steak you know got nice sharp teeth being mature and everything and there are like paul says first corinthians chapter three to start at the beginning that some of are babes and uh, some think that they are very, very advanced, but they have their water and their blood doctrine, kingdom and grace. They got it all mixed together. Don't know the difference between the gospel of the kingdom and the, and the gospel of the grace of God. Don't know the difference between the body of Christ and the bride of Christ. They're mixing it all together. That's what denominationalism does. It's rightly dividing it. Knowing kingdom doctrine, Peter, John, and James from grace doctrine, Paul, Barnabas, and Titus. And separating that from Mosaic law for Israel of the flesh. Those are three witnesses of spirit, blood, and water. And once you see them too. It's all laid out for you in the mystery explained. So this, uh, um, this has been updated and answered for you, Gary. And you're going to get it from the newsletter that I'm about to upload. And then you have the opportunity to ask me more questions on that. There's a lot of nano silver related information, stories, updates. I want to introduce you, if you don't know, um, Igor Shepard, Dr. Igor Shepard from Russia. Very important testimony that he's given. It's included in this newsletter. And many of the, uh, the nano silver that, uh, questions and answers that Doug answered for people is in this newsletter. That's what this newsletter is focused on more. At one point, David, my brother, my, my brother from another mother, was sending me articles to kind of keep it kind of like the uh, Black Star newsletters. And the the meat of this newsletter program, that's what this is about, which I didn't read. 
This newsletter program is all about helping people see God's wisdom hidden in plain sight using His three witnesses, spirit, blood, and water, testifying in the Holy Scriptures from Genesis 1, 1 through Revelation. And once you see it, I'm telling you, it's really, really something. That's what that this is. This program is about. So I'm going to upload this now, and it's going to go to the YouTube channel. Make sure that you are, uh, which seems kind of funny because if you can't see this, you can't get the message, but if you are a Mystery Report subscriber, the first thing that you want to do, well, you want to include the email address that you receive from me. I'm going to write to you, but it's not going to be from the website email address. All right, It's not going to be from this one. It's going to be from a different one. And then you want to make sure you add this one because once in a while I, there's too many emails coming from the other one and I have to use this one. If I go over 500, they're going to close down my account. So sometimes I have to write you from here, but generally, and the where you're going to write me to is the other one. But make sure that you come down here and go to the website and click on this link. So you want to add my two email addresses to your contact list. So some of you have security systems on your emails that are blocking me from sending you notifications. That doesn't make any sense, does it? There, even Black Star, there are some people that the emails are bouncing off your server because you want me to fill out a form so I can send you the information that you've paid for. That doesn't make any sense, does it? So make sure that you add me so that you do not miss notifications. Those are the people that are going to write me and say, I didn't get my notification email and it's sent. I can show you a copy of it. It has a timestamp on it. The date, the time, and everything, right down to the second. But you have set up security that keeps me from informing you, like I'm a bad guy or something. But it's really you just missed out on uh, doing that. On getting me set up properly in your account. And then go to this YouTube channel. You see it down there in the lower left. And subscribe. Because that's going to be telling you when there's a new newsletter uploaded. When you get the, in your YouTube account, you're going to get a notification of this video being uploaded. That tells you that a new the 2021 Volume 1 newsletter has just been uploaded. Okay. So that's what you're going to want to do. And if I have time today, which I'm not going to until, then I'm going to try to upload this to the Brighty on Channel 2 to get more of you guys. There's more and more of you guys coming from here that are subscribing here because you're seeing it. Okay. So... Then, uh, yes, I anticipate that we're going to be raptured before the sudden destruction. The survival group program is for those that we're going to leave behind. So we earn the greatest heavenly rewards, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 10, for deeds done in the flesh. So we're preparing ourselves physically to the best of our God-given ability. And then we're preparing ourselves spiritually to the best of our God-given ability, too. You can do just one or the other, but I'm running the race, race to win this thing. All right? Leaving everybody in the dust, if, if at all possible. So if you just want to prepare physically or spiritually, God bless you. Because if everybody does that, then guess who's got the best shot at winning? i got a, a grin on my face because I know this is happening pretty soon. It really is. It's happening pretty soon. And it's going to be a great, great thing. I'm just like Gary and just like you're going to be when you realize how close we are. That we're so close now, I can almost taste it. And... We're going to be looking down on, on the toils of this life like it's a dream. And we're going to see things from a completely different perspective when we first get there. And then we're going to realize, oh, we've been here before. We've been here all along. That's what I'm really, really looking forward to. Appreciate your support very, very much. And um, very happy to get this uploaded. You can go check the 2021 um, Dropbox folder for the mystery report. And you'll see that all of them are there. But you must have the 2021 now since yesterday. That's all been from 2019, 20, and 21 have all been put together in the new folder. Okay. So appreciate you guys' support very, very much. Those of you supporting me in the Mystery Report program and those in the Black Star program, appreciate your support. The more you help me, the more people I can then, I have more resources, and that's the more people that I can help. And um, that's my goal to work for Lord God, and those for whom Christ died right up until we are taken and we meet the Lord in the air. Get more information right here at the website. Appreciate your support. I'll see you on the next update report.